Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Beyond Omega Level. In this video, we're covering a character that you all have been requesting and all the people on Discord and Patreon have been requesting, Superboy Prime. Now, here's a funny thing, plug about Patreon. Um, I know a lot of you guys are kind of unsure about the Versus videos in terms of whether or not it's, it's worth investing in on, on Patreon. The last Versus video we did was uh, was Franklin Richards versus Dr. Manhattan. The next one we're doing is Franklin Richards versus Matthew Malloy. And then I think after that, we'll do Matthew Malloy versus Dr. Manhattan to see who would win in a battle between these two characters i think it's cool like we're just doing like super like like super heavy hitters versus super heavy hitters like super super like overpowered characters you guys seem to love those for some reason and and, and it's crazy like overpowered characters versus overpowered characters <laughs> Admittedly, I love those kind of characters too. But in this one, we're doing Superboy Prime. Now, for those of you guys who have newly arrived to the planet Earth from whatever world you're from and don't know who Superboy Prime is, he was created by Elliot S. Magan and Kurt Swan and made his first appearance in DC Comics Presents number 87 in 1985. But he wouldn't actually use the name Superboy Prime until Infinite Crisis number two in 2006 by Jeff Johns. Now to understand Superboy Prime, we first have to be familiar with the concept of the DC multiverse, which is made up of multiple universes, each with its own version of Earth. Now, Superboy Prime is actually the Kal-El from Earth Prime, which is the DC Comics version of our Earth, the real world, where characters like Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman are fictitious heroes. Now, the child that would become Superboy Prime was adopted by Jerry and Naomi Kent and given the name Clark. Now, as it turns out, Clark was actually Kal-El from the planet Krypton in Earth Prime, and just like the version of Superman that we all know, was sent to Earth by his parents just before Krypton was incinerated by its son. Now, Clark grew up normal normally until the age of 15 when Halley's Comet passed over Earth. Now when the Comet passed, it triggered Clark's Kryptonian powers and made him into Earth's version of Superman. And so Superboy Prime has all the powers that the version of Superman we're all familiar with has. Superhuman strength, speed and endurance, flight and vulnerability, x-ray vision, heat vision, frost breath, all the stuff that Superman can do. However, because magic does not exist on Earth Prime, Superboy does not have a weakness to it as the main universe Superman does, and is also not weakened by the kryptonite of New Earth the reality that exists after Crisis on Infinite Earths because he was not from that reality. Now, eventually, Prime Earth is destroyed by the Anti-Monitor during Crisis on Infinite Earths, and Superboy battles alongside the heroes of other universes to defeat the Anti-Monitor. Now, after the battle and with the Anti-Monitor defeated, Superboy goes to the Paradise Dimension along with the Superman and Lois Lane of Earth 2 and Alexander Luther, the son of Earth 3's Lex Luthor. Now, he spends years in the Paradise Dimension, never aging, but coming to resent the fact that he'd been robbed of his youth and would never grow up to become Superman. And so because he just sits in the alternate dimension and gets angrier and more bitter, he eventually decides, along with Alexander Luther, to escape the Paradise Dimension and come to the main DC Universe by literally punching the barrier of reality that separates these two dimensional spaces. And so this punch is not only the first indication of how powerful Superboy Prime is, but it also sends ripple effects throughout the DC Universe, changing aspects of DC's continuity in its wake, most notably bringing Red Hood Jason Todd back to life, merging the origins of Superman into the main continuity and rebooting the Doom Patrol, among others. Now, what this means is that Superboy Prime is powerful enough to alter reality in addition to all the powers that he already possessed as his universe's Superman. Now, Superboy and Alexander's entry into the main universe brings about the Infinite Crisis event, and it's here that we see some of the most impressive displays of Superboy Prime's powers. For instance, he alters the orbits of several planets, including moving the planet Ron so close to the planet Thanagar that Thanagar's environment is destroyed and the two planets go to war. He's also able to move the center of the universe away from Oa, the homeworld of the Guardians of the Universe. Superboy goes on to blow up the Justice League of America's Watchtower and kidnaps and subdues and then eventually kills Martian Manhunter, an Omega-level character on his own, on par with Superman. At one point, Superboy is taken into the Phantom Zone, a pocket universe that serves as a prison for some of the most powerful entities in the DC Universe. And pulling off a feat that was thought to be impossible, Superboy punches his way out of the Phantom Zone, once again altering reality in the process, this time as it's related to the origin of Beast Boy. Now later, we get to see just how ridiculously fast Superboy Prime is when he's 
trapped in the Speed Force by basically every speedster in the DC universe, and it's stated that Superboy Prime is faster than Wally West, who at the time was believed to be the fastest among all the speedsters. Now, while in the Speed Force, Superboy is trapped for years under the light of Red Suns, which dampen his power significantly, but he's eventually able to free himself from the Speed Force by constructing a power suit that captured and stored the energy of Yellow Suns. Now, the fact that he was able to do this seemingly impossible feat shows us that Superboy Prime is basically the picture you see in the dictionary next to the word overpowered. But Superboy's feats do not stop there. He also dispatches the Justice Society of America, the Teen Titans, and the Doom Patrol all at the same time and later remarks that he wasn't even trying when he battled them and was also unfazed by a punch from Black Adam. Now eventually, Superboy Prime is captured and imprisoned in a quantum containment field on the planet Oa with a junior red sun eater to dampen his powers and is guarded by 50 green lanterns at all times. Now he would later be freed from this prison by the Sinestro Corps and would fight the heroes of Earth in the Sinestro Corps war alongside the Corps as a minion of the Anti-Monitor. Now during this time, he fights Sodom Yacht, a member of the Green Lantern Corps that has been amped up by the Ion symbiote that increases the power of those it bonds with, and it should also be noted that Sodom Yacht is a Daxamite, an extra-dimensional race descended from Kryptonians, meaning that he basically has all the powers of Superman. The two fight pretty evenly until they find themselves in a nuclear power plant. The lead used to contain the radiation from the power plant severely weakens Sodom Yacht, and Superboy Prime nearly kills him. Later, during the same event, Superboy survives the World War bomb explosion, which was powerful enough to destroy the entire galaxy, and also rips the Anti-Monitor to shreds and throws him to the end of the universe. Now, although the Anti-Monitor is weakened, this is still quite an impressive feat given the Anti-Monitor is well beyond Omega level himself. Now, finally, after Superboy was thwarted by the combined efforts of DC's heroes, along with the Guardians of the Universe, in a last-ditch effort, one of the Guardians tries to destroy Superboy by self-destructing, but this only serves to make Superboy even more powerful as he absorbs the power of the Guardian. Now, in this form, we see Superboy Prime at a whole new level of power as he kills the Superman from Earth-15, which is basically on the same level as the main universe Superman, and likewise kills that Earth's Batman and dispenses with his Wonder Woman in one hit. Now, he eventually destroys the entire Earth and everyone on it, and suggests that he could tear the multiverse apart if he wanted to. He even manages to make his way to the fifth dimension and kidnap Mr. Mixopitalic, which is absolutely crazy, because Mixie is one of the most powerful reality warpers in DC, and Prime just takes him and then subdues and tortures him to force him into his beating, although it does appear that Mixie was somewhat weakened. Now, in this form, Superboy Prime is feared by the Monitors, which are nearly omnipotent cosmic beings. He also fights Monarch, another crazy powerful entity that had absorbed the powers of all the Captain Atoms from various Earths, and when Superman rips his armor open, it destroys the entire universe of Earth-51. In fact, the only thing that we see capable of destroying Superboy Prime is when he meets himself from the 31st century. They fight, and Superboy Prime punches his older self, and the younger one fades from existence. And so yeah, Superboy Prime is really just like this super amped up version of Superman with with none of the weaknesses a Superman has traditionally had. The thing is, it's never really explained why Superboy Prime seems so much stronger than the main universe version of Superman in the first place. It's easy to explain when he's absorbed the power of the Guardians of the Universe, and even when he has a power suit that collects Yellow Sun energy. But even then, it's not explained how he made that suit in Infinite Crisis. But initially, it's not made clear if the discrepancy is based on Superboy Prime's insanity that develops inside the Paradise Dimension, or the fact that he's simply Superman who's just not holding back. In any event, he's definitely a mega level as we've seen by the laundry list of ridiculous feats that he's performed. And yes, I'm aware that later he gets beat up by the Teen Titans and trapped in the Source Wall, but honestly, that just seems wildly inconsistent with how he was previously written. So I view this as more of an outlier than as a true representation of his power level. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like. And yeah, I feel like we should do a video on Superboy Prime at his max at his peak against Dr. Manhattan. Well, I think we're going to do that on Patreon. So with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end and I will catch you all later. Peace. I want to give a shout out to Jason C, Austin S, Jason S, Austin H, Philip, and Austin B. We have a lot of Austins in our Patreon, <laughs> as well as Genosis916. Genosis didn't give us the first and last name, so we kind of had to roll with it. I didn't mention you all's last names. I figured you guys didn't want me to throw them out there, but I want to say thank you to you all. By the way, your Rob Corps rings should be on their way. For our Honor Guard members of the Rob Corps, for these special patrons, your custom Rob Corps rings 
should be on their way. They're being shipped to me. After that, I will have them shipped to you. Stay tuned, keep your eye on Patreon and your messages, and you will hear about them coming to you. Thank you.